What's up my friends, welcome back to another Electro News or weekly update. And remember that in these kind of videos, as always, we'll talk about news about this channel, Electro Noobs, and also electronics in general, so I hope that you learn something new. Okay, so let's see what we will see in today's episode. First of all, I'll talk once again about the electronic speed controller for electric, uh, for electric bikes. Because that project was for the previous week, but I wasn't able to finish it, but now it's ready, so that will be for this week. Also, I'll talk about some future videos and all the components that we have here on the table, which will be for a future video, and then I'll show you something new around my workshop. And of course, we will have the Q&A, and there I'll answer your questions from the previous week. And I also had the idea to maybe recommend you a new channel related to electronics each week. So all you have to do is to click that link to go to that channel and if you like it, maybe even subscribe. And these are all channels that I like. Or maybe even leave a comment below on that channel saying hello from Electronoops. Okay guys, so that being said, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. So let's start this weekly news and let's start by talking about the project for this week and that will be once again the electronic speed controller. Remember that this board was made for controlling brushed TC motors like this one, I have here a huge brushed motor and this is usually used for e-carts or for e-bikes. So I had some problems with this ESE and that's why I haven't uh, finished this project the previous week. But this week the project will be ready I still have the fail and I will explain that in the video and wait uh, till the weekend to see that. But let me just talk a little bit about the fail for this one. So first of all, you know that to control a MOSFET, to control this kind of motor you use PWM signal and control some MOSFETs. And to control a MOSFET you need to apply a higher voltage, a bigger voltage than 5 volts that you use with the Arduino. So for that, for that you usually use a driver. But in my case I was trying a driver made with some BJT transistors and I found one on the internet that is using an NPM and both a PMP and an MPM. So you have some sort of inverter, because when you, the input is high, the output is low, and when the input is low, the output is high. That inverter wasn't working well, so the maximum voltage that I was reaching at the output was maximum uh, 6 volts. So I had to change the, uh, the driver and add a pull-up, I don't know if you can see there, but I have a small transistor soldered to a pull-up, and that transistor is in the air and the pull-up, because the PCB was made for two BJT transistors. So I fixed that error and I also had a small uh, short circuit and that chip was using uh, was, was the AACS712 and I was using that chip to detect the current value and the limit the current because you see, maybe if you want to limit the current to 10 amps, if you pass that value, you can decrease the PWM signal to make sure that the MOSFETs and the motor will be safe. And finally, when I finished the PCB, as you can see, I've, made a, I've used a small metal case I've uh, placed the MOSFETs there with some thermal paste in between so it uh, will conduct all the, all the heat because without this case the MOSFETs will burn out in seconds and I really mean that. During some tests I was testing this with uh, maybe 9 or 8 or 9 amps and in just 3 seconds without a heat dissipator the MOSFETs blew up. So and also to answer a question from the pre previous video that's why I'm using 3 MOSFETs and not just one. This MOSFET is the IRF 44N and it's pretty much capable of driving up to 40 or 50 amps. But the reason that I'm using 3 is because one MOSFET could dissipate less heat than 3 MOSFETs because you have more area, more area will be in contact with the metal case and like that it will dissipate all the heat. Because with uh, 10 amps I'm pretty sure this will get quite hot. So yes, this will be the project, stay tuned for this weekend and you will see everything about this PCB and also the new version and the improved schematic. So guys, let's go to the next part of this episode and talk about something for a future project. So guys, for a future project, I'll talk about all this, all you can see here. And these are pretty much all the modules and components you should have as a maker for a DIY or homemade electronic projects. So some LEDs, some power supplies, batteries, power controllers, back converters, some sensors, microcontrollers, some bearings, also some hardware stuff, and so on. So let me just give you a, a short look because I don't want you to show you all the components because in that way you won't be you won't see the video at the end of the week. So let's just show you a little bit of all the components and uh, pretty much what you will see in general. Okay guys, so let's see. Starting from, the, from this corner, we have some batteries, microcontrollers, a power supply. We will have some BMS. We will have 80 tinies, Bluetooth audio receivers, potentiometers, speakers, uh, bearings, I don't know, some programmers, LED strips, uh, some voltage indicators, more power supplies, some buttons, connectors, switches, 
some key types of switches, PCB terminals, some relays, maybe some magnetic actuators. We have some amplifiers for audio, some LED strips, these are addressable LED strips. Of course, screws, more buttons. For testing, we'll, you will need some breadboards and also, also some prototyping PCBs. So as you can see, we have a lot of components and everything that you need for DIY projects. So if you want to solder something, if you want to amplify something, you want lights, you want to control a uh, motor, you want to control maybe a step motor or I don't know. So guys, I don't want to show you more than that because in this way you will want to see the video at the end of the next week. And I also have some more boxes here with more components. So yeah, stay tuned for that. But pretty much this is what you will see. Some components that you are usually, you, you will usually use for DIY projects. So if you want to make something with a battery, you will need a battery, the charger, maybe a BMS, maybe a boost converter to boost that voltage to, I don't know, 12 volts, then connect it to the Arduino. So then you will need something for audio, so to amplify that, or an LED strip and a power controller to dim the light and so on. And also some hardware, so bearings, screws, some pulleys, belts, and everything that you usually use for this kind of projects. I hope this will teach you something new and also that it will give you idea for your project so you will start making your own projects. Because remember, usually making a project sometimes will teach you even more than books because you fail, you try again, you repeat that and you learn even more. Okay guys, now let me show you something new in my workshop. So guys, just behind me is the new tool that I have in my workshop. And I've been using this for like two weeks and soon you will have a review about this and that is a new 3D printer. So this guys is the new version for the Artillery Sidewinder X1 and this has tons of features but the best of all is the silent movement. In a few moments I will show you that and it will be incredible. But let me tell you some specs about this printer. Okay so the specs for this printer. First of all the entire body is made out of metal so it's very stiff and it won't vibrate too much. Then we have the heated bed which is controlled with 220 volts AC from the mains outlet and that means it will heat up very fast, in like just one minute it will heat up maybe to 90 degrees. The design of these printers also looks very clean, because instead of using just loose wires all around, we have these strip connectors, so with this it will look a lot cooler. We have a touchscreen for controls, and we have an SD stick control and also an SD card for putting your files. And then the spool holder is right here, with some bearings so it will rotate uh, smoothly. And by the way, this is not using a Bowden extruder, this is direct drive, so it will work a lot better with flexible material. And they've done this by using a smaller stepper motor inside and the Titan extruder. I think, I think this is a clone, but anyway, it works quite well. As you can see here, the extruded metal is very thick, so that will give us more stability. And the best thing about this printer is that it's very, very silent, because it's using those Trinamic stat drivers and those are working very, very smooth. Let's just see an example. Okay, so right now I will move the Y-axis and as you can see, we'll have pretty much no sound. Can you hear something? Now the X-Y-axis and the Z-axis. So as you can see, we have pretty much no sound. So guys, this was the new tool that I have in my workshop. As you can see, I've been making some tests with PTG, with PLA, ABS, nylon, even flexible. And soon I'll release the review about this entire printer. So you will, you will be able to check it out. And maybe I'll also leave some links below if you want to buy it because I really recommend this. For the price, it's a little bit better than the usual uh, 3D printers. And yes, I really like it, it's, it's quite awesome. So now let's go to the Q&A part of this episode. And by the way, I've selected only three questions because otherwise these videos will get quite long and I've already had a lot of comments because this usually should be short. This is just news every week. Okay, so let's get with the Q&A. Let's just see the questions for this week. I have selected three questions. And the first one is from HHHBBB. That is a very strange name. Anyway, uh, how do you master microcontrollers? I mean, how much to explore? Okay, so for this question, what I recommend you, if you really want to master a microcontroller, what you have to do is to master the datasheet and at the same time, well, the registers. Because if you think, for example, for the Arduino, the Atmega 328, if you really want to control anything about that microcontroller, you will need to know how to control the registers. Because even if you make a pin high or low, what you actually do in the memory is changing registers. If you place this register for this port, from 0 to 1 you will make it high and if you place it for one, from 1 to 0 you will make it low. So basically we have registers for pin control, for timers, 
for interruptions, even if you make an ice crusty communication or any type of communication, you actually send bytes, so bits, or maybe registers from this one to this one. So you'll have to know the address of those registers. So basically, if you know how to control these registers from the datasheet, you'll know how to control anything about that microcontroller. Because everything is made around registers, the arithmetic unit and some memory. So what I recommend you is to just take the datasheet of that microcontroller and go step by step, read it, and try to understand each register and then just Google an example for each uh, register. For example, how to control the registers for the, for the timers, how to control the registers for the inputs and outputs, for the PWM signals, for interruptions, and so on. So when you get to know the entire datasheet, you can start working at the codes, the if, the else, the switches, and everything else that you can do in C++ or any, any language that you use. So just read the datasheet and learn the registers. Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay, the next question is from Srinivas. You have missed the question on the 300 watts brushed ESC, which is the project that we have talked before, this ESC for brushed DC motors. Okay, why are you using six FETs in parallel when you can just use one FET with the same current or voltage ratings? Okay, so first of all, I'm not using six, I'm using just three. You could use six at the same time, but uh, that's not a problem. But I've already explained this. If you have like uh, 10 or 15 amps going to just one MOSFET, the, the surface area is very low, so the heat dissipation is also very bad. So if you want to heat dissipate a lot of heat, it's better to just put 10 amps going through 3 MOSFETs, so you'll have around 3 amps to, through each MOSFET and also more surface area. So that area will make more contact with the metal and dissipate all the heat, because one of the, of the most important steps for this project is to dissipate all that heat because otherwise the MOSFETs will burn out. So that's pretty much the reason why I'm using more MOSFETs. You could do it with just one, but it's better to use three in this case. And also you shouldn't mind about the parasitic capacitance at the gate of the MOSFETs, because this control of these MOSFETs is not that complicated, it's just a PWM signal at the gate. Okay, so let's go with the next question. Okay, the next question is from FresMNGZ. And uh, he or she asked me, what platform do you use for programming? Okay, so let me just tell you the platform that I usually use. When I started in university, I started with Java and Python, so I've used it, I was using Java and Python. And then, by myself, I teach myself Arduino, and then in the third year of university, we've used Code Composer. So for Arduino, we have used the Arduino IDE, and for the C++ and C, we have used Code Composer, which is from Texas Instrument, because the microcontroller we have used at, the, at that time was some, uh, someone called MSP430 or something like that. And that was from Texas Instruments, so we, we have used Code Composer. So Java, Python, Arduino IDE, Code Composer for C++ and C. And then lately I've been using PHP and uh, HTML and CSS, this time of programming, for websites. And I've been using Dreamweaver for that. So that's it. These are basically the platforms that I'm using right now for, uh, for coding. Okay, so now I will recommend you a channel, another YouTube channel. Uh, related with electronics and I hope that you will like it and maybe you can go and leave a comment below say hello from Electronews. So let's see that channel. But guys before I recommend you that YouTube channel just wait a little bit because this week I will go to the escape room and I also want to show you a little bit uh, around there because we'll, we will make some maintenance in the escape room if you want to see it and then if you wait a little bit more I will recommend you that YouTube channel and you can go and say hello from, uh, from Electronews. So let's see the escape room part. Hey guys also as a weekly update this week I'm also uh, working here on the escape room and today I'll open that panel because I have to make some maintenance. We have to rewire some uh, Arduinos and as you can see this one has 8 Arduinos and 8 LCDs and also the artillery panel with the sound modules. So that's what I'm doing, I will be doing this week as well, uh, fixing one, some problems in this panel, in the escape room. And maybe I'll also make another video about the escape room and showing the, you what we have behind these panels because a lot of you guys asked me that in the other video. Okay, so there you have the panel all flipped up and uh, it is made out of wood and only the front part is made out of metal. And we've made it in such a way that here we have a hook so we can flip the panel and hook it to the wall so it won't fall onto the players. Anyway, let's see what we have inside and by the way, get prepared because inside we have a lot of dust. Okay, so let's see. The first thing that we have is the main supply, which is a, norm a normal plug. So from here we have 220 volts and remember that I told you some of the panels are using PC power supplies. But this panel is a lot smaller, so it's using just a normal 12 volts, no, 5 volts power supply. And uh, that will supply the speakers here, the audio module, and these Arduinos. And as you can see, each LCD has its own Arduino and the keyboard, because these are used to place the, the code for the GPS. 
and then we have a small uh, LED strip here just above the acrylic panel and the acrylic has a photo with the, that map and in that way you will get the light on the other side. So that's pretty much all we have. A bunch of Ardu Arduinos connected in series. Finally, the YouTube channel that I recommend you is called Joe Brooking. And this channel is great. He has a lot of tutorials about Arduino, about drones, and lately he also has some tutorials about the STM32, which are great and will teach you a lot. And by the way, he has a full tutorial about how to make a drone with Arduino and that is great and helped me a lot with, uh, with my tutorials. So just check it out and if you like it, subscribe and maybe leave a hello from Electronews. So guys, this was the last part for this Electro News. I hope that you learned something new and remember to comment below the Q&A for the next week where I will select 3 more questions and answer those in, in the next video. So guys, thank you very much and see you next week.